Good morning. You listen to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Kay Sargent, the Director of Workplace for HOK. Kay, how you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you. Yes, we were together just a few weeks ago at the StarNet meeting in Scottsdale. You were one of the keynote speakers. So a little background, you're a trained interior designer with a lot of credentials. I think you've been in this role at HOK for over seven years, right? That is true, and I've been a practicing designer for over 38 years. A little more background. The vertical sector of corporate slash workplace is the largest. So if you're in the business of installing floors, selling floors, this is the largest segment in the commercial market. And there's a lot of question marks thanks to COVID and Zoom and work from home, what this future is going to look like as far as employees coming back to a place where they can interact. So tell us what you think. I think we're at a really interesting time in history right now where we have a unique opportunity to rethink kind of everything. I think for a long time, we've kind of assumed that everybody has to go to the office to work, but you don't really have to do that anymore. And so I think some degree of hybrid work is here to stay. It'll vary from company to company and region to region, but it is something we're going to have to embrace. And so I think that puts a new focus on what is the true purpose of place. It's not just a place you have to go to anymore. And so we really have to assess real estate portfolios and think about how do we make them a magnet? How do we offer people something they can't get someplace else? How do we create opportunities for people to do both focus and collaboration work, but really kind of create an amazing experience on places that people want to be on our enticing? All right. So a couple of points. You said from the stage at the StarNet meeting that from a CEO's perspective, they're moving toward more of a four to one ratio versus a three to two, meaning the four days at work and one day flex. That's the trend right now, right? I think right now the majority of companies, about 70%, have embraced some degree of hybrid work. How they're doing that is still in flux. And a lot of companies kind of gravitated to a 3-2, and they're really trying not to mandate, but they're not getting the attendance that they were hoping for. And some are realizing that there really are a lot of benefits for people being together, and so have advocated for 4-1. And I think in a lot of cases, that's hoping that at least you'll get people there three days a week. But I think there's a lot of things that are starting to come out now about what are the true benefits. And it is going to vary from company to company. But basically what we are hearing from our clients, the head of corporate real estate, the CEOs, is that they need and want to get people back into that shared spaces so that they can focus on other things like quality and professional development and culture and well-being and all those other things that are essential to the success. You know, since I saw you face-to-face in Scottsdale, I know you're working on a project in Europe. Different cultures are reacting. And from what I understand in reading, in Europe, they're actually coming back to work faster than they are here, right? That is correct. And And I think there's a few reasons for that. I think, you know, there are some major regional nuances. And most European cities have housing that is more embedded into the fiber of the city. They, they still do have suburbs, but a lot of American cities weren't necessarily designed for people to be living in the cities. And so the majority of the workforce actually works outside of that central district. So it's, you know, that commute is a massive hurdle. I also think that there's just, you know, different transportational modes, there's different priorities. You know, in Asia, I think we're seeing a ton of people come back to the office primarily because when you're living in smaller single family units with multiple generations, the office is actually a place that you go to have something that actually is your own. So there's lots of different reasons why people are coming back and there's a little bit of ebb and flow in in different regions. The other reason I think is that North America has highest percentage of knowledge-based workers, if you want to define them that way, and the yeah. highest percentage of people that actually can work remotely. So when somebody decides to tap HOK, I think oftentimes, let's just say it's the CEO, they say, okay, help us out, transform this workspace from one where people have to come to work into one where they want to come to work. 
I think there's certain things you can do. Obviously, there's as many options, whether it's a, a sea of panels or whether there's conference rooms mixed in with different zones, and that's where your expertise comes into play. But you were saying from the stage at Starnet that, that while you can make a place that's more adept to teamwork, that it's really about the company's culture that makes the employee that wants to come to work, right? I think there's a lot of factors here. Hybrid is really more of an operational model than a workplace solution. And I think the, in, the real estate industry right now is being set up for failure because a lot of companies are looking at that and saying, create this amazing space that everybody will, will want to be at to solve my hybrid problem. But hybrid is the hardest model to pull off. And you really have to think about how do we retrain managers to manage by performance, not just presence, and how do we onboard people? What is the culture and what are the policies and how do we eliminate silos and how do we reduce proximity bias and all of these other factors? And workplace and creating enticing spaces that are really fit to purpose is absolutely an element of that, but all the pieces have to be in place for it truly to be successful. You can't just address one and ignore the other elements. One of the things you said from the stage, which I thought was amusing, but it's true, is when you ask an employee, do you want to work from home? It's similar to asking them, uh, what do you want for lunch? And the answer might be, well, chocolate, of course. So sometimes an employee might not know what's best for them, right? It's not that people don't necessarily know what's best for them and we somehow magically know what is better for people that, than they know for themselves. But I think, you know, we're asking people that have never been in a situation before how they think it's going to play out. And the reality is we have worked with companies over the last 30 years that have had very successful remote programs that have gone off the rails. And we've been working with companies that have had hybrid work programs for the last 10 plus years. And there's a lot of elements that are important. And it's not just about what do you want. It should be what does your company need? What does your job require that you do? What do your coworkers need from you? What do you want to be successful and happy and have that good balance? It's all of those factors coming in. And if you just are asking people what they want, what they might want could be totally the opposite of what their position actually requires and needs. So we need to ask better questions to get really a more holistic approach about this. Okay, I know this is a crystal ball type question, but I mean, if you want to be in the mindset of our audience right now, they're really interested in whether or not there's going to be a demand for more square footage of office space in the cities. If you had to crystal ball it, do you think that based on whichever pattern of work ratio it is, we're going to need more space or less space in these cities for work? Certain industries are going to need more, like the pharma companies, etc. And it's very specific. There's a lot of warehouses need. So there's some very specific space types that are needed, but office space in general, right now there's kind of a glut of that. There's actually a lot of companies that are trying to get rid of it. And it's not necessarily because of COVID. A lot of companies had too much square footage before COVID. They just didn't really pay much attention to it because they didn't necessarily worry about it and people were coming into the office more. I think what we are going to see is a demand for maybe less space, but it's got to be better space. And there's kind of a this light to quality right now. And I think we need to repurpose a lot of the square footage that we have to other things, whether it's adult learning centers, whether it's healthcare, whether it's residential. That's a huge issue right now. So retrofit and adaptive reuse is a major issue in most cities right now. Most of the people who are listening to this right now track the uh, architectural billing index. And as you probably know, it's been uh, you know, below 50. We had one month above 50, and now it's below 50 again. I know I'm asking HOK, which is a leader in the business, but are you guys keeping busy? We actually have had some of our best years, and quite frankly, some of our competitors that are, that are like us have too. I think the companies that have been successful in this are the ones that are diversified and that are in multiple mm -hmm. sectors because the office sector got hit really hard. If you were in corporate interiors only, you probably did hit, got hit pretty hard. We do a lot of strategic consulting. We do a lot of healthcare. We do sports and rec. We do hospitality. We do a lot of different sectors. And so 
you know, part of our strategy is one sector might be down, but another one is going to be up, and then you know that sector is going to flip in the the coming years. So some firms I think did really well, depending on how they were positioned. There is a lot of work out there because one thing you can guarantee is that there is pent up demand. Now, whether companies are truly embracing that pent up demand and the opportunity to really do something different, that's yet to be seen. But we're we're actually keeping pretty busy. Okay, good, good to hear. So I know you're going to Neocon next week. Your daughter is actually interviewing you, I think on the seventh floor in these little 20 minute pod thing. Tell us about that. I'm going down. That's that's all I'm going to say. My daughter is going to interview me on Tuesday afternoon at the heart. It's going to be short, so I should be able to survive for 20 minutes. But, you know, I think we all live in fear of certain questions that I'm living in fear of when she asked me, so mom, how did you prioritize or decide how to prioritize work and family like during those years? <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, we're going to, yeah. Nobody's going to keep you honest like your kids. Yeah, I, got, I can understand. It's taken me two weeks to set up this interview. You're a very busy person, so uh, I can I can see where she might want to ask that question. <laughs> okay, thanks so yeah. much for spending time with us, and look forward to seeing you next week in Chicago. Again, have been talking to Kay Sargent, the Director of Workplace for HOK, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.